When you meditate, you have to be in the right mood to meditate. This is one of the reasons we have chanting, as a way of calming the mind before each meditation session. And sometimes you need more than the chanting. So reflect on the fact that you've got a good opportunity or you've got the, the good karma from the past that gives you the opportunity to be here meditating. Think of all the people in the world right now who don't even have this opportunity. You've got the opportunity to work directly on the mind without any other interference. There may be thoughts coming in from the past, but that's relatively minor interference if you treat them with the right attitude. Remember, that's past karma. At the moment, you're not responsible for past karma. You're responsible for your present karma. So that means you're totally free to do as you like with those thoughts as they come up. You can ignore them if you like. You can counteract them with thoughts that run in the opposite direction. If, in other words, if a thought of greed comes up, well, think about the disadvantages of struggling to find the object you're greedy for. If lust comes up, think of the disadvantages both of the object of the lust and the actual lust itself. It's an unpleasant state in the mind. If anger or fear, any of these things come up, think in other ways to counteract them. You can do that, too. So you've got lots of tools for dealing with the thoughts that pop up into the mind. Remember, the things come into the mind are here either because of past intentions or present intentions. Again, you can't do anything about the past intention, but you can make a difference with your present intention. So focus on that. Focus on what you can do rather than on the things you can't do. This is where equanimity is important in the meditation. Whatever's going to come up from past intentions, you have to have a lot of equanimity towards it. You don't get excited about it. You don't get depressed about it. Just note that it's there and work on what you can do right now. So all of this is part of getting the mind in the right attitude, getting in the right frame of mind to be meditating. And then make a survey of your body. What have you got here? You've got comfortable parts and uncomfortable parts. And again, you've got your choice. You can wallow around in the uncomfortable parts and complain and be miserable, or you can stay with the comfortable parts. The problem is when you stay with the comfortable parts, all too often you start getting lazy and careless. So you've got to figure out a way to stay with the comfortable parts and yet stay alert at the same time. So notice the breath energy in those comfortable parts and think about spreading it. This gives you something to do. They don't have to be very comfortable and the parts don't have to be very large. But you take advantage of what you've got. If you've had really great meditation and experiences in the past, this your memory of those experiences can oftentimes get in the way, because here you have just a few little comfortable spots in the body and doesn't seem like much. certainly can't compare with your memory of the past. But if that stuff in the past was really all that good, where is it now? If it was really something you should hold on to, it should be sticking with you, but it's not. So you want something better than that, and that often means not just waiting for things to come floating through in the meditation, but actually working on what you've got. You've got a few comfortable sensations here and a few comfortable sensations there. We'll allow them to spread and connect. And be patient about this. If you're in a real hurry, it's like trying to, trying to grab peace of mind. The act of trying to grab it actually destroys it right there. So very patiently put together all the little pieces where it's comfortable here, where it's comfortable there, allow them to connect and flow together. And bit by bit by bit, you'll develop your foundation.
Remember, you can't develop patience by being impatient. You can't develop calm by being upset. You simply got to stop and get your bearings. Get the right frame of mind. And that's a lot of the work right there. Once you've got the right frame of mind, then it's simply a matter of learning how to maintain it. And John Fuing used to say there are three steps in developing good states in the mind. One is basically learning how to do them to begin with, and the second one is learning how to maintain them. Now, it's pretty easy to think good states up in the mind, just like it's pretty easy to think unskillful states in the mind. All you have to do is think of them, and they're there. The question is maintaining them, and that requires patience, it requires application. Just stick with it. Whether the good states of mind seem very good or only just okay, focus on what you've got. Make the most of what you've got, because it's only what you've got that can grow. And John Lee gives the analogy of someone planting an orchard. They take all their money and buy up new trees and plant them in the orchard all at once. And then it turns out they don't have enough water for all the trees, or a drought comes, or a disease comes, and it wipes out the whole crop. And then they don't have anything left at all, because they spent all their money on the trees. He says the wise way to start an orchard is start out with just enough trees to get things going. And then when they start producing fruit, you say some, save some of the seeds, and you plant new trees with the seeds. And then bit by bit by bit, what you've got grows into something much bigger. It requires patience, but it's solid. It's reliable. It's the safe way to start a new orchard. In the same way with your meditation, you focus on the good things you've got, whether they're as good as you want or not, focus on what you've got and develop that. Because if you don't develop what you got, what are you going to develop? You're going to develop your memories, you're going to develop your disappointments. That's not what you want to develop in the meditation. You develop mindfulness, you develop alertness. So take the mindfulness and alertness you've got, and everybody has it some, to some extent. You take that and you work with it. And then the mindfulness and alertness begin to bear fruit. Then you take that fruit and you invest it in more meditation time. And after all, you find that the, the good states of mind begin to crowd the bad ones out. And even if the, the bad states of mind are totally crowded out, at least they don't have total possession of the property. Your good states of mind are like the trees in your orchard. Bit by bit, they, they take over the weeds, crowd the weeds out. So this is one of the aspects of meditation people don't like to hear about, about the steady work, the plodding work. It doesn't sound all that exciting. Well, you can make it interesting by playing with the breath. But remember, a lot of times it's a gradual process. And then as you get more and more familiar with that gradual process, you begin to learn the shortcuts. Everybody wants to go to the shortcuts first, but it doesn't work that way. Sometimes other people can give you tips on the shortcuts that have worked for them, but you've got to find out what works for you, because it's in the finding out that you develop your own discernment. Again, if you have everything handed to you on a platter, what kind of discernment are you going to develop? It's like kids born into a rich family. They very rarely have any, any skills, because they're not required to. I learned recently of a couple where the, the woman was raised in a very wealthy family. And she and her husband built a new house, and she had to have a separate bathroom for herself simply because she had never learned to pick up after herself, and she was not about to now.
That's the danger that can come when things go too easily. So we don't want to be people like that. Learn how to pick up after yourself. Learn to deal with some difficulties in your meditation, because that's how discernment is, de is de developed. As Jean Mahabua says, it's only when you're cornered that it's often only when you're cornered that you've got to find some way out. So here we're not really cornered, we're just facing some difficulties in the meditation. Well, sit down and try to figure out what the problem is. Are you trying to learn patience in an impatient way? Are you trying to calm the mind down in an upset or frantic way? Stop and take stock of what you're doing. Because it's not the random thoughts that come into the mind that matter. It's how you handle things, the decisions you're making right now about where you're going to direct your mind, what you're going to focus on, what you're going to do with it. That's what counts in the meditation. And when you focus on that, then the mind begins to settle down and feel at ease in the way you want it to. But whether it happens quickly or happens slowly, that's not the issue. The issue is simply that you focus at the right point. Ask yourself the right questions. Why is the mind upset right now? Is it past stuff coming in? Well, don't get upset over the past stuff. Is it because you're not paying careful attention right now? Okay, that's something you can work on. In other words, you have to learn which things you should just let be and which things you really have to focus on where you can't rest content. You have to make the distinction. When the Buddha described the insights of his awakening, the part that he said was useful for telling other people was this principle of how cause and effect work in the mind. In other words, some causes come from the past and some come from the present moment. It doesn't sound all that exciting. It's certainly not something you could put on a movie screen. But it's one of the most useful lessons the Buddha taught. You look at your mind. If things are not going well, there are two possible sources, past, present. Past intentions, present intentions. Once you know that, then you can focus on the right spot, the present intentions. And take what good qualities you have right here and make them your allies, make them your friends. And establishing the kind of state of mind you want right here. And then learning how to maintain it. Sometimes it starts out really good, and it's just a question of maintaining what you've already got as good. Other times it starts out, well, okay. And then the maintaining is a process of learning how to make it gradually more and more reliable, more and more strong, more and more satisfying. Once you've learned how to maintain it, then you can put it to use. to gain even deeper insights. But again, you can't just jump to the deeper insights. You have to work on the little ones that come along the way, because that's the exercise for your discernment. So take stock of what you got each time you sit down and meditate. How are things going in the body? How are things going in the mind? And take stock of things also that which things you simply have to let be and which things you work on. Once you can make this distinction, things go a lot more smoothly. It clears up a lot of the issues in the meditation.